Welcome to another episode of Unconditioned Mind. Unconditioned Mind is a project of Awakened, which is a movement that focuses on contributing to gender and racial inequality. As we come to the end of the season, we've been dealing with healing trauma, anxiety, and, and depression. And I thought that as we end this season, I'd really like to end with a personal experience. Uh, the, this episode, I call it dealing with a life crisis. Um, because I mean, of my life of ups and downs that I've shared in my book, Awakened to My True Self by Nongule Kokobodo, I just realized that there's just such insights that I got from those experiences that I want to share with you. And also, we, we, we have these crises in our lives purely coming from, again, the traumas that we've been through, maybe childhood trauma, it may be other traumas. So it's actually very much linked to, to the season itself. So what do I mean by a life crisis? What I mean is that we've been through these experiences, whether it's losing a job, or losing a business and going into a deep financial crisis, or you go through a divorce, that is just a big crisis in your life. Um, and again, I mean, this is what I'm saying, is that because of the childhood trauma, we create a certain self-image about ourselves that we need to heal from, we need to grow in certain areas, and we want to awaken to something. So we create these life crises. And I want to say we create, which is very challenging to come to that realization that I'm the one who created the life crisis because of this deep desire to either heal or grow in certain areas or awaken to something or awaken spiritually. And I also want to, to add other types of crises here. Although I don't want to say you called those ones or you created those ones, things like losing a, a spouse or a partner at a young age or going through a, a, a life-threatening illness. I mean, it's still a crisis right? We may not have called it, but it has visited you. And for the same peoples, for the same people. So you have to treat all those crises crisis the same way because there is a deep desire to heal, to grow, or to awaken. And I'll explain further what I mean by we create the crisis. Now, I just want to share my first crisis, for instance, when I fell pregnant at age 17, and I got married. I mean, that was a huge crisis in my life, not just for me, but for my parents as well. And you come to a place of thinking, yo, my life has ended, you know? I, I have nothing, I don't have metric. What is going to happen to me? And you are dealing with this, and I've shared in my book around what actually happened that led to this crisis, how I was quiet and my mother was worried about me, and started expressing her fears of I'm not going to make it in life uh, until I believed that I was a failure. And at that point, indeed, I was a failure because I had no metric. Um, I didn't know who I was. I didn't even know what I wanted to do with my life. And out of that crisis, when I started working at my father's panel beating shop, that is where I found myself. And that is where I got uh, introduced to the profession of chartered accountancy. And I had clarity in my mind what I wanted to study. And I went back to school and started a become and until I qualified. So out of that crisis, I healed some things, like that self-image. I grew up because I certainly had to mature very quickly and become a wife and a mother overnight. And I, I woke up to something, and what I woke up to was, I was not this person that I always believed I was, 
who was a failure and didn't know what he wanted, she wanted to do with her life. So I woke up to that realization. And from there, I was able to move on with my life, able to achieve all the great things that you know about. So that crisis served that purpose, right? So what then happens is that we don't create just one crisis, unfortunately, because we are always growing and always learning some new things. So at some point in my life, I created another crisis and another crisis. And I'm sharing this because what we don't do is use the crisis to learn everything that we need to learn, grow in whatever areas we need to grow, heal whatever we need to heal, you know, and awaken to whatever. Milk the crisis as much as possible so that you don't create another crisis later on because you, you, have, th you, have, you have things that you uh, didn't learn in the previous one. And of course, I think it's natural to, to, to understand that we also can't learn everything in one crisis, right? We, but at least for that one, grow to the level that you need to grow to. So that in the next one, you're not starting from the one things that you needed to learn so that you can grow. I believe that, you know, our growth and expansion as souls, as people, is not linear. It's, it's like a spiral, you know. So we grow in, in form of a spiral. So in the next crisis, you're not starting from the bottom. You're growing from this end of the spi spiral and then going, going up. But you need to come to a place where you wake up so that you've come to that place of maturity so that you don't create a, a crisis again unnecessarily. You can just start growing from, you know, another level and another level from there. So what we normally do then, what I've observed in my own self is that, remember, you're not aware that you created the crisis and that there's a purpose to it. So you find yourself in a crisis. And our first response is, yo, my life is falling apart. I've just lost my, my business. Uh, I got into this major accident. I remember with, with, with myself, that that's what happened. As the day I was finalizing, closing down the business, that day I had a major accident and I lost my car. So here am I, my life is falling apart. I don't have a car don't have a business, and it's just a major crisis. Uh, so you just focus on this crisis now. You are battling to solve this problem, and you are focused on solving this problem. You are trying this and that, and nothing is working. And as you battle the problem, it's just getting worse and worse. You are going deeper and deeper and deeper into the crisis. And, and the nice thing is that although you are in this crisis and focus on the problem and creating more problems, but there are elements of growth. We are growing in certain areas. Growth is taking place. You may not be aware. You know, growth is taking place because you look at your own weaknesses and uh, that led to the crisis in the first place and you start to deal with them. And those areas of healing, you know, start to come up. Like in my major crisis that I created, those nine years that I call my wilderness years uh, in, in my book, uh, I started healing some things there. I healed rejection, for instance, that had been a problem in my life for a long time. So healing is taking place in spite of all this. And I'm growing, I'm, 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 I'm realizing why I, I lost my business is because I started fighting with my partners. So... You know, you're dealing with those things. Uh, dealing, so growth is taking place. But you are still so obsessed with solving the problem, battling the problem, and, and so on. And what we also do is we don't take responsibility. Remember, we don't understand that we created the crisis. So we're just blaming. We are blaming other people. Those partners, for instance, it was their fault. You're blaming uh, God. You are blaming Satan. This is an attack from Satan. You are busy battling Satan and demons. 
or if you if you are a Christian, for instance, if if maybe you believe in uh, the traditional modalities, you are blaming ancestors are angry with you, or you know, am I You're just blaming witchcraft for your your for, for your circumstances, for your challenges. And as as you are blaming others, you are not taking responsibility. You are not focusing on yourself. You, you, you just want a solution, right? You are crying to God for a solution and you are wondering why has God abandoned me? Um, I mean, this, this, these are the things that were going through uh, my mind at that time. Where is the Nogleg I know who normally does big things? Where is the God I know who, you know, the, the God of miracles, who really just performs magic in my life? Suddenly, he seems to have abandoned me. All of that thinking it just deepens the whole crisis. You've got to come to that place of waking up and start asking the right questions. And I'm giving this advice that when you are in a crisis, when you are in that space that I've just described, you have to wake up and start taking responsibility and say, okay, how did I get here? Why did I call this crisis? What did I want to learn? As Oprah normally says, what has this come to teach me? Because once you start asking those questions, even your whole focus changes instead of blaming or focusing on the problem. You suddenly stop focusing on the problem. You start trying to find those areas of growth, those areas of healing, those areas of awakening that uh, you, you, you really desire. Now, as you grow, you, you come to a place of starting to wake up. This is what I experienced, that I would start to wake up, you know. And when you start to wake up, you can see even the rhetoric, the things that are coming out of your mouth are certainly different, right? And you, and I realized that I would come to a place of understanding that this crisis is over. This whole thing is over. Um, I would start making the right decisions, the right choices that would lead me out of the crisis. And what used to amaze me is that it would end suddenly, you know? And suddenly this big problem is, is solved. All these big problems that I was battling and battling and battling are suddenly solved. And my life just continues, you know, and I go on to do, you know, I find a new self who is able to create a new life. So I was just fascinated by this thing and I started, you know, exploring what is this exactly, uh, which led me to actually inspire me to do this episode. So... I just want to say, when you are blaming and blaming God and blaming uh, witchcraft and blaming all of those things, we, 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 we tend to spend a lot of time in the crisis longer than we need to, right? Uh, whereas when you start, uh, you know, waking up, asking those questions in the second crisis, why am I back here, you know? Why am I again in a financial crisis? Why have I um, lost my business, fought again with my partners, uh, lost my car? Why am I back here? Why am I again, you know, ending a, a love relationship or the second marriage? You know, when you start to ask those questions, that's when you, you, um, you start to grow and, and start to get the insights that would lead you out of the crisis. And I want to say, there is only one purpose for the crisis. It's for our own growth, right? It's for our own awakening. It's for us to reach a higher level of consciousness. Every crisis, its purpose is to raise our consciousness, right? So when you are blaming devils and, and, um, and witchcraft and all of that, you've really reached a very low level of consciousness. 
and at that time the ego just takes over it's loud voice which is why you are just battling and trying to save yourself like that person who's drowning and as you battle you know you sink whereas if you would just come down and relax you would float to the top it's it's like that you can't even hear god when you are there you can't even hear the holy spirit because we are at such low levels of consciousness that you can't hear and unfortunately because of these religious beliefs whatever the beliefs whether you know it you are a christian which I, i was at the time or you you believe in the traditional modalities they they sort of you know um lead us to a place of you're just holding on to whatever the relig- religious institution has been telling you 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 are lo- looking for these solutions in this religious uh, teachings that you've had and you you are wallowing holding on i mean it took me years they believing that god was going to save me god was going to defeat this devil devil who is um, responsible for my challenge and in spite of the fact that the teachings were not manifesting in my life my life experience was the direct opposite of what the teachings were saying i was still holding on and now i realized later that i had invested so much and it had been a couple of years already invested so much in these religious modalities that i couldn't bear the idea that the whole thing could have been an illusion so it's like that gambler who has lost a lot of money in gambling and is just holding on that this illusion has to be reality i have to recover my money this gambling that lost your money is the one that is supposed to help you to recover the money that you've lost is really just madness to be honest because when i come out of the crisis first of all i get to a place where i'm tired of suffering right once i get to that place of being tired of suffering that's when i start to ask the right questions what am i doing here um why did i end up here for for the sense and how did i come out of the last crisis right um so i just want to say that you can't be blaming god because i remember that i would say things are so hard things are so difficult why is everything difficult why is god abandoned me and i remember god saying at one point when have they ever been difficult nongulek reminding me of those miracles i'm talking about of that magic that i've seen uh, in in my last project for instance and i would be so confused so why can't those miracles happen again and then i realized that God did not suddenly go impotent. You know, he's not suddenly helpless and can't save me or help me. I'm at a such a low level of consciousness that I can't even hear what the spirit is saying. I can't even hear what God is saying. And and I appreciate now that at those times the spirit may be whispering some things but you don't hear them because we are the ego is the one that is the light voice that we are hearing and secondly god also respects your deep desire to heal to grow and to wake up so he respects that he knows that you you need this you know it it, it will be helpful for you because as i say when i come to the end of the season suddenly everything suddenly that god appears with his miracles ready with his miracles suddenly i find unonkuleko who has always been powerful and doing bigger things than i did before so don't blame god don't blame devils because that is just very low even even god to moses he said come up to the mountain top i'm not coming down there i'm not joining you the god is never going to join you when you are wallowing in those level, lower levels of consciousness he says come up the mountain come to me and indeed when you awaken you find him ready ready with his miracles because he was never impotent in the first place you just needed to wake up 
Now I want to make an analogy that really fascinates me uh, of a tree. Uh, nature, we, we have so much to learn from, from nature. Uh, God is a God of seasons. So we go through a winter, and winter has its own grace. Right? Little fruit, scarcity of food, but there's enough food. God is always with us in all seasons. In the crisis, God is with you because you survived the crisis, and we don't know how did we survive the crisis. And um, when it is spring, suddenly the plants know that winter has ended. Before the rains, the green, green shoots start coming out. This tree that was dead suddenly comes to life and is green and there are flowers and then fruit starts to come out. But when we are in our winter, for instance, we don't even appreciate the grace of winter. We are busy wanting summer fruit. Where are the big peaches? Where are the mangoes? No, we are not going to find them in winter. They are only found in summer. You have to, the season has to run its course as you grow, as you heal, as you awaken. And, and the season may take you to spring, for instance. Uh, again, even when we are in spring, although we are relieved that at least the crisis is over, but we are still looking for the big things. You are looking for summer fruit. No, just be satisfied with the fruit of spring. And know that spring will end also and will get to, to uh, summer because there may be things that you have not learned before. So as you ask that question of why did I call this crisis, um, don't ask just once. Because when you ask that question with a sincere desire to really know, because you are ready to take responsibility instead of blaming some insights may come. I mean, you can now hear the spirit, what the spirit is saying. And uh, there may be layers to it. That's why our healing is like peeling an onion. So if you hear one thing and you run, this crisis must now end. You are, you are still live, leaving other layers. So just be patient and keep asking until you feel like you've exhausted everything. It is better than wallowing in the problem, creating more and, and, and more problems. So I, I, I want to say then that the crisis has a purpose. And its purpose is your desire to grow, heal, and awaken. Either awaken to another level spiritually or awaken like I woke to the fact that I'm not this person that I always believed I was. And I just want to emphasize again that Use the crisis for its purpose. Make sure that you get all the learnings that you need to learn. You heal whatever you need to heal. Because with this crisis, I took my healing to another level. I took my growth and maturity to another level. I grew sp spiritually to another level. Um, and, and, you know, you reach those higher levels of consciousness. We are not going to hear higher levels of consciousness when you are at a lower level. Also, if you are not going to hear, you've got to go up the mountain and go to higher level. You've got, you have to wake up, my dear. This is my message for you today. All the best as you navigate your way out of your crisis. And I just want to implore you to listen to this video more than once because we don't hear the first time. We always run with the little piece that we, we, we need at that time. I just want this crisis to end, right? So whatever nugget you hear that would maybe lead you to ending the crisis, you run with that. But when you listen again, you hear other things that you didn't hear before. You don't have to prolong the crisis for longer than it needs to go. All the best. <laughs>